What's up guys, it's Tenkosh and today in Final Factory we will do the beginner's guide. Tutorial is there, but you need to learn some things that will make your factory and overall survival more efficient. Let's start with the basics guys. Uh, we have some base here, but we'll talk about that in a second. I want to tell you about the controls a bit. Left click will produce one item in the crafting, right click will produce five. So if you want a couple of things being made, you can right click that thing, no problem. Moreover, as you pull the items to your quick bar over here, let's say we want uh, those storage things there, you can control click them as well, control right click. And if you have the resources, the items will be automatically constructed. So there we go, we click the solar panel with the right click and we got one solar panel in the queue. So that will allow you to do things way faster and easier. Then for the basic construction, I would recommend setting some cargo holds for the basic things like structure elements, like AI cores, because it will make crafting so much faster. If you will just input the ore in your cargo and build, use that for crafting, it will have to be recrafted into the components first, which is slow. So instead, you can come to the right chest, hold control, left click, and that will pick one stack of the items from there. That will easily fill your inventory with the things you need to craft without worrying about them too much. Moreover, if you click out, you can see what kind of items has been produced and stored where, so it will allow you to easily find the things in your um, factory. So, uh, I have a small base set up over here and I'll guide you through every process. When you start to go through the tutorial, obviously it will give you some hints, but first of all, let's talk about producing the mining drones. So as you know, for the drones, we need the engines, plasma engine parts, and they are being produced at 60 items per minute, but they consume the low density structure from atomic printers, which have been produced at rate 75 items per minute. That means that you probably will need two of those in order to fully saturate one of those assemblers. That will then go to the minor bot recipe and keep the production going high. So that's why we have this small setup over here. We might need to connect another mining station later, but it's okay right now. Why do we have several of the mining stations? Because they can flow inventory from one to another using the connector. So when this mining station gets the bioxide, it can transfer it to this mining station and then all together on this belt. It really works well and if you need to have even more bauxite flowing somewhere, for example into the logistics bay, you can have like several of those being connected to one side, uh, to one tile of the logistics bay and several of those connected to the second tile. That will allow you, just like that basically, that will allow you to have higher throughput to that area. Now interesting question, how many mining stations do we need? per one belt. It's really hard to say because they have variety of production per second, so um, it will change. On average, they kind of about one uh, ore per minute. On average, they kind of about one ore per second, that's 60 ore per minute. And since the connector have the capacity of 4.5 items per minute, so four of those mining stations will fully saturate one belt. So you can make four on this side, send them that way and four on this side and send them that way and straight into whatever you want to send them to. All right, there are some enemies. Um, uh, let's talk about the enemies since they attacked. The enemy attacks are governed mainly by your overall structure. So you can go to the factory information over here, general stats, and you have the global stability. The higher it is, the tougher the enemy attacks will be, the more enemies will come, the faster it will happen. And uh, yeah, basically you gotta keep it low unless you know what you're doing. I decided to play on the harder difficulty because, because it's fun. So I have to keep track of things and don't overbuild too much. So that's why we have those uh, small factories and everything, all the stations should be pretty much uh, modular in this game because they have the stability and uh, when they have low stability, if you build too many things, you will need to build a station core and it will increase the stability of the connected structures. I think the basic stability that you need before you will need to build a station core is 42 or something because take a look at that, this station works without the core just nicely. Same about this station. So the small things can work without the core and things like asteroid research station, combat station, and other stuff like that. Actually, do we have those? Yeah, we have four of those combat things. Let's place them right now. All right. So those things, they do not need connection to the main station because 
Well, they are good as they are. They just need some power and they are ready to go. So let's place four of them to protect our base right now. And they will automatically get the drones being produced in there without any issues. How many of those do we need? Two? Actually, one is enough. It will have a bit low power, but it will do. If you want to have the maximum performance, you can put two solar panels each. There we go. That will keep our base defended for a while because our newly constructed bats will fly there and protect the area around us. All right, now let's talk about the energy and heat mechanics. Each station have uh, several things to take care. Station stability, which we talked about. Then we got the power, which is being consumed by the things and produced by the solar panels and other things. And heat, which is being produced by, well, producers mostly. So it's uh, atomic pr printer and assembler. And it can be um, dissipated using the, how is this thing called? Heat exchanger. Even without the radiators, they will still work, but sometimes you will need a couple of them to keep the station running. That will allow your station to work properly, and if your station will have too much stability, or too low stability for that matter, it will stop working completely. So let's do that. Let's make this one busy. There you go. As you can see, when I'm putting another connector here, bam, we have low stability, and all those buildings will stop working. They're supposed to stop working, actually. Yeah, no uh, printers will work. Nothing will work properly. So you will have either to remove those extra items and just uh, make sure that you have the station core to make it right or add the station core. Let's add the station core. And uh, yeah, that's 45 stability right now. So that's the point when you will need additional cores here. All right, now let's talk about the uh, logistics a bit. Basically, at first, you might want to build everything in one pack, totally connected, you won't be able to. You need it to be um, really modular and connect the buildings together with those cargo drones. That's the only good way to do that. And uh, you will have to do that early on and later on in the game as well. Last time, I did a mistake and made a very chaotic factory that was really hard to manage. This time, I decided to make it differently. So here we have three of those logistic base that will deliver stuff upwards. And here we will expand our factory to the sides that will produce different components for us. That will allow us to scale it easier, to scale it upwards and don't cross the transportation between the cargo drones. Because if one of your cargo drones will have this type of connection and uh, there will be a parked uh, cargo drone over here, it will get stuck, you will get the traffic, and this thing won't deliver. If it will be blocked, it won't deliver anything. Although those guys can fly above most buildings other than logistic base, so that's actually quite easy. You can kind of build a lot of stuff here below them, and it won't really prevent them from moving around. That's really cool. So I created three logistic base, one for medium structure, one for uh, low density structure and one for the AI control circuits and then they have been delivered here to those two logistic base and they will be delivered and they will also be delivered later after on for additional production and here we produce uh, basically the ships so we produce the ship assembler so we produce the asteroid research and the uh, bats here another cool thing that if you don't know, you can use station core as a throughput, so you can actually put the connector into them and they will deliver stuff from them. So it's really convenient when you are trying to build the mobile base or something compact. You can put stuff in the station core, get the right filters, and they will be sorted away just nicely. Also, since the station core is that big, you can connect a lot of different things to it, like heat exchangers and solar panels. So it's a nice thing to have. As for the research, I advise, well, you will follow the tutorial anyway, but I advise you guys to get some uh, really good bad damage and get to the lasers as soon as possible, because you will need the lasers and armor in order to defend your base later on. Most of the early technologies are pretty important and you would like to have all of them and they are not that expensive. You can get that tech from uh, scouting the asteroids, so it's not a problem. And by the time you will get to planetary research, you will get most of the basic stuff researched. And yeah, guys, don't worry. If your production chain is complex and you are kind of feeling that you are overproducing, you are not because uh, the resources that are being not used, they are being stored. So uh, your asteroid ore will be stored here if it's not being um, 
used in the atomic printers and etc. So do not worry about that. Another good thing about those logistic networks that we created here, like the line, whatever, I, th I think it's called bus, that you can get inputs from the bottom to them to when you will run out of the basic asteroids so you can deliver stuff here and uh, spread it throughout your factory and if at some point you will be lacking some resources for example those low density structures you can get another transport get in here delivering those things and uh, it will kind of increase the throughput starting from this area and going upwards so yeah once you get your basic things being produced uh you will get the beds being produced you would like to have at least one or maybe a couple of shipyards those things are really useful because they store your ships and you can select request specific units and store like 60 of beds and that will allow them to be stored there so you can come and replenish your uh, reserves by just clicking on this station so let's make it run and yeah shipyard can be fully operational with just four yeah with just four solar panels so you don't really need need to connect it to anything just place it somewhere get the solar panels and it's good enough already because before that i was connecting it to the station and it was really ugly taking a lot of space and not that convenient and yeah then when you need the bats you can just come to the shipyard take maximum and they will go into your fleet another nice thing when you are tired of those guys clogging the screen you can press on this button f3 and they will hide unless there will be enemies sometimes it's glitching out so be careful but most of the times it will be okay and you will be able to see clearly what the hell is happening by the way guys if you will need extra tips on the game or some additional info we have the wiki set up final factory game vault wiki and you can come here and get all the info about the game we got the text guides we will have the builds here we have all the items their recipes and what's pretty cool you can see what items can be used where so if we'll go to the low density structure we can see that it can be used by several recipes it will help you to properly plan your factories and learn about the items the link will be in the video description so right other than the basic thing the game wants you to produce you might want to produce something extra for example i would like to have storage of connectors storage of uh, logistics bay things storage of uh, cargo drones because those will be needed in a good amount later on Obviously, we would like to have bed production, maybe solar panels, because those things are being used quite often as well. So uh, you can actually optimize your production by creating additional items and structures if you need them. Although early on, when you just start out in the early game, I would advise not to go too deep on that. Otherwise, your global stability will increase too much and the enemy attacks will become too harsh and you will spend a lot of resources defending from that. And I actually exhausted my Baux seed before I got the new source of it and that was horrible also guys some items cannot be produced by the player for example mass energy converter so you will need to make production lines for that it will use only iron ore so we will need medium density structures creating robotic parts and then creating the mass energy converter and yeah with this layout that we have over here it's pretty easy to set up just get another logistics bay connect it with one solar panel that's more than enough to make it function properly and uh, then make your magic so we will make it pretty simple right now i want to move the production sideways so it can be scaled afterwards and uh, yeah you don't need to make extra delivery line because you can set the filter here for one item and here for the same medium density one and here you can use the produced robotic arms here and deliver them like that so it will be way more compact and will allow you to create things that you couldn't create before even though we don't have that technology yet but yeah we need this in order to get the laser turrets that will allow us to properly defend our base from the tougher enemies so they should work together with the defense platforms we'll talk about defense a bit later when we'll get the laser turrets and yeah when you're building something new like robotic arms i personally would like to have it stored in the chest as well so that will allow me to come and pick up it from time to time if i need this so let's make this one a storage for robotic arms so we can get them in our inventory as well for faster manual crafting also if you are building something like this for logistics and you really want to have some extra stuff in case if your supply will go lower you might include storage 
in this chain. So replace one that with this. And there we go. You have something like a buffer here. So it can actually get extra resources if this one will be full and supply all the production things later if needed. Moreover, you can middle click to turn off some slots if you don't want it to be used at full. But honestly, I'm okay with using it like to the maximum also guys all items in the game like ancient portals that's a random tip for you uh, obelisks and everything can be activated by right clicking them and holding so that way you can get extra stuff like lumen orbs like the portals that will allow you to teleport around i guess i haven't actually got to use that yet and uh yeah it's really convenient and you should get it when you can so there we go we have mass energy converter available for crafting and we need robotic parts and medium density structure for it same as for those buildings so how we can do that we can remove this send that and create additional assembler here it might be not the best option i'll be honest with you guys but it will work it will work and um, it will be way better than what i did before trust me <laughs> But yeah, there might be better options. Once again, you want to check the wiki for that because I am I just played it once and I failed miserably. So uh, right now I learned something during those mistakes. And now I'm trying to show you that it can be done differently, more effective. And uh, you won't have to worry about different consequences after that. Let's actually do this. We'll put the core over here and use it as our hub for... Um, sending the resources around that way we can scale production better so there we go that will allow us to produce those things and send them in this chest so we will always have a lot of those and we will need a lot of those to produce laser turrets that's for sure uh, this one should be used for the medium structure let's go so yeah, you can put resources straight into the station core after the logistics bay, for example, and then spread it around this production facility. Up to you. Uh, I don't use them first yet, but I think I will move to that later because it feels really convenient. Once you will unlock antimatter power stations, uh, you might want to replace most of your solar panels with that because those things, they produce more energy per structure value let's put it like that so let's compare them we are placing them uh connecting to the bigger building so that's one drawback and the second drawback that they need to have space around them to add the antimatter catchers collectors and as you can see one of those produce 50 kilowatt of power same as 10 solar panels i guess right right by itself antimatter power station will produce only 14 kilowatts it's already uh like three solar panels and in terms of the structure uh it will cost us instability four stability three solar panels will cost us six stability already and additional collector recipes are two stability same as the power station solar panel and they are way more efficient in terms of like stability that you get on the station and there are no drawbacks they don't consume anything they are pretty passive as well and they are pretty cool. So let's calculate. Three collectors, that will be six stability. And one antimatter power recipe will be four. So it's 10 stability for 50 kilowatts. While for the solar panels, that will be 20 stability. So it's two times more stability per energy generated. And yeah, once you get to this, remove those solar panels. It will be more convenient for you. They are a bit expensive, but once you will get solid state laser production automated and uh, you will be able to build them in no time in your inventory or even automate their production somewhere uh in your factory i decided that one of those assemblers isn't enough for me so i've built another one uh that will increase my production of those items i feel that it's not enough and uh i wanted to show you how to make connectors bend because before that i was wondering how to do that just like in other facto factory games they can um deliver resources to other main connectors so if we'll be doing something like that the uh bottom and the top one will insert extra items in the main belt if the main belt is full they will not do that so that will allow you to make like uh corners um but you can't truly make a corner straight away so you will need to space things correctly in order to use them properly so now if you want the laser turret production and you want that at some point in the game anyway, it's better to automate it and have some of those stored because you can't really carry too many of those 
mass fuel consumers, mass energy converters. We would like to get solid state laser automated as well. It's low density structure and AI controlled circuit, so it can be produced somewhere here. Although it feels like here we won't have enough a space for that because it's already pretty busy with the ship production and we, want, we don't want to overload it so let's create another delivery ship right here and it's as close as possible to this one so we won't have to move too far away and create one production tile over there now so the new factory for the new items if you want to copy some station or uh, get something that you already have you can use the copy operation do we have a hotkey for that ctrl c ctrl v all right and ctrl x that's easy to get ctrl c you select what you want to copy and then you move it where you want to place it so something like this and uh, something like this Moreover, another advantage of this type of factory, it's really easy to protect because you can easily track everything that's going in and out and cover all the sides and everything. It will be way easier than trying to manage something that's like big, wide and in all the places. So let's try to start this one with the station core. That will be interesting. Ah, this one is too small anyway. So that will allow us to properly plan things out, I think. So here we have those things. Here we have uh, those things. So they are all going into the core. And then they will go here to produce the solid state laser. We will straight away make the um, proper power connection here. And the radiator at the second dock, not enough, should be okay. Later on, we'll connect the actual radiator to the heat exchanger. So yeah, if we would like to combine some items and deliver them again using logistics bay, we would like to do it outside of this line because uh, it shouldn't be interrupted. Of course, there is space in the middle for extra items that I kind of can place here to deliver even more stuff. But for now, I decided to keep it empty in case if we will need something else that I couldn't really know before going to the specific point of the game so yeah so there we go that's our solid state laser delivery and uh since we have this thing over here and that's what we need for the laser thing i think right medium density structure mass energy converter and solid state laser medium density right here i don't want to connect them in the same station i want it to be delivered separately so yeah i will have to move this one in other location for that so then we can move it to the actual logistic thing it's already a bit far away from the main crafting area those will be delivered here all right and uh we will need those uh, middle density ones we can deliver them right here by the way since this will be another spot for those things we will need it here anyway and we can use this spot can we wait can the ship fit here oh not really really close but not really i wanted to build it here but we have to move it a bit sideways oh we can turn this thing and have it accept multiple resources ah no we can't well let's make it a separate station that will be better so the problem is we will need three inputs something like this and something like this why did we made it like that because we'll be doing small delivery here as well and we will use the small drone for that we don't need that many of those things there and this small fella carry five items at a time and uh oh we need a lot of solid state lasers okay forget about that so we can make input for a medium structure and for the laser things over there and since this one is over here the only way we can do that is like this there we go that way we'll be getting all the resources that we need it might not be the most beautiful way to do things but it will work now let's create a assembler and connect our connectors there there we go and here we can produce the laser turret. There we go. So that's the laser turret production for you guys. Amazing. And they'll be delivered into the chest so we can pick them up when we need them. Now we just need some more power for it. And we're good to go. They will keep going as long as we will supply them with the resources. For the laser turrets though, I think we might want to close some slots because having more than 100 of those uh, is a bit too much for us even right now. 
so yeah don't uh have too much storage of the rest of the things that you don't really need or you won't use because uh you will use up way too many resources early on you don't need that you want those to be ready for action if you feel that some resources are low in your production line feel free to expand their production by adding additional miners by adding additional inputs etc usually for your factory a couple of those steps will be good enough at some point your uh, cargo drones won't keep up in order to make them keep up you can either get additional drone like that so that way they will double their delivery speed or if it's an option and it is an option here you can create one more ship over here for example and make another of those logistic base in the middle so they won't have to fly that long and that will make their delivery kinda faster the next thing i would advise you to create to protect your base is production of armor blocks you have armor blocks and triangle armor blocks but honestly you just need the normal blocks right now in order to start your production cycle and they require medium density structure as well so let's do some of those since this station is pretty much idle we can use it for production of those things if you don't want to you can place it in other areas because here it can be pretty clumped right now also keep in mind that building additional production buildings in the chain uh in the middle will drain the resources from that area so if we will place it over here on the main logistics bay it will drain those medium density structures and refine them straight away into the armor which might not be the problem if you have the full storage of those but if it's something that's been constantly used like i don't know mining boats or something that might be a problem because that might drain your supply and other buildings down the road won't get enough so yeah now i want to place two of those buildings since i don't want too much production and they will output sp something special for me two armor blocks this will be the normal block and this will be the triangle block there we go and they can be delivered to the storage in order to be used later on in my construction of defense platforms by the way guys if one of your station will overheat it will start taking damage it will not just stop working so this one over here is overheating and look at that it's taking damage that's not nice excuse me can we lower the heat already yeah we should so yeah try not to let your stations over here so now let's talk about the defense uh what kind of defensive platforms i would recommend you guys to create i actually thought about that for a while those guys are nice while you get the basic enemies when you will get the enemies that will do um splash attacks airway attacks multiple projectile attacks your bats will fly like flies that will not do well for you so i would advise creating the laser stations combined with the uh, drone carriers uh, defense platforms so let's create that kind of platform and i will show you how i think we can defend our base so what i would advise i would advise having um, at least six laser to repair defense platform better eight and you will need the core for that so let's create the core and place the laser turrets and the problem with the laser turrets is that they have to be fed with resources they won't just shoot by themselves which is i don't know why it's like that but that's the case one two three four five six seven eight let's put them like that and now we connect them with the belts from the core that will deliver them the resources that they need then we would need some defense because the enemies oh they would love to destroy those outposts that's why we needed automation to make sure that the defense of the outpost will be good and they will not be destroyed fast something like that will do you can optimize it however you need but that's basically basically the basics <laughs> and uh, you can put one or two defense platforms uh, they will look really good at the sides so something like that but make sure that the defense platform will have a lower attack range so they won't fly away of this range of laser turrets so their role of the drones is to hold enemies that are going straight toward our base and turrets and don't fly away flying over the horizon yeah that's alert range when they will start launching the ships and this is the attack range how far they will fly 
This is the laser turret that uh, have its own attack range. And we would like to have the same range. Oh, this is so far. Yeah, we'd like to have the same range for our drones. So maybe a bit bigger attack range. Yeah, something like that. So they will fight together instead of the drones flying too far away. Maybe even closer a bit. We don't want them to be too far away. What the hell is alert range? I don't know. Let's leave it at the maximum. So let's say 200 meters attack range. That will do. When the laser turret have, I think, I think about 250 range or something. So yeah, that will allow you and your drones not to be in trouble as they're relatively close to the base inside the range of the laser turrets take out the enemies no problem now since those will be at the sides of your base you might want to add exploration center to it it will consume quite a lot of energy but and have some stability costs but that will allow your vision to spread and you will know what's happening around i wonder if that can put the resource yeah it can good and it will deliver resources there and now you will need the resource connection to it so you will need the logistics spot over here my god this is huge this is bigger than i thought but what's really cool if you will have the linear layout of those like we have over here and we will replace the normal defense platforms with this advanced ones over time we can just send transports delivering stuff to those logistic base basically delivering the supplies the ammunition and they will work no problem so that's the basic design you might want to add something extra we will always need to add some power and cooling to it so let's make this area with the heat exchanger and this area with the generator how many do we need do we need full generator here and in order to get the generator how are those things called uh well actual and in order to get the radiators you will need some ice ice is really easy to get because as you will be exploring you will randomly find a, an area with the broken comets that will get you some ice and later on there we go comet fragments those things and later on once you will be done with that you will be able to get infinite ice from the comets and that should be your fuel to those stations because uh fueling it up with something that you produce my god it's pricey you don't want that yeah do you see those guys they're called i don't remember how they could tr try them they're called trident those fellas let me try to take a closer look at them yeah those guys those tridents will decimate your bets oh we got uh oracle here we need to get to this point later uh since we're here all right since we're here oracle is the place where you can spend your lumen orbs for extra upgrades and bonuses i've never been able to get to one it was too far away here i'm lucky it's really close so we'll be able to do something about that later so let's get some more comet fragments and we can go back to the base so yeah they will overheat if they will work um, honestly you can go with the heat exchanger as well because by default if they are not shooting the heat isn't that crazy and uh, it's being produced by default but not so much we kind of dissipate more than we produce so it should be okay but in case if you want to be sure you can add just another radiator over here like this and everything will be good so now station is balanced we can do whatever we just need to supply it with the resources and um, yeah press this button here that will automate i think uh, resource outflow to some to whatever there will be so you don't really need to manually assign it afterwards and then what you want to do in order to place a couple of those to create a blueprint begin a copy operation select it with all the buildings that you need all right and save new blueprint we will co call it uh defense platform M mk2 because i already had mk1 so yeah and now you can kind of place it wherever you want and uh, do we have yeah this is it i'm actually wondering if it will save the settings of the um, drone facility I'm not sure about that, but yeah, you can actually place them on the perimeter of the base. When you will get the comet catchers, you can supply them with ice and that will be infinite protection for you because otherwise you will run out of resources protecting your base from the enemies. They will keep coming. There will be a lot of them and uh, you don't want to survive that. So yeah, we can build them uh, on a pretty good distance from each other and uh, that will guarantee 
I'm not sure about guarantee though, you might need to upgrade it later, but that will help you to protect your base for sure. You might add more defense. Oh, we forgot something. We forgot something really important. This thing, repair center. It's essential to repair your base, so you will need it. I advise having two of those just in case in order to repair your buildings during the attacks, of course. Later on, you might want to adjust it, of course, but uh, for now, that will be pretty good for your defense. And now all we need to do to place it, we just have to use the blueprint and have enough items that we need for the platform construction in our inventory. So let's place a couple of those, one on this side, uh, one over there. We just need four of them right now in order to fully protect our base. A bit further away so we will have some space inside and some space to deliver things. So one over here. Their range will end at the asteroid, so we'd like to have second one right here. And your drones will put everything to action. Oh, I'm actually curious if defense platform settings will stay. No, the problem is it resets, but it might be fixed in the later patches. So make sure to assign it to 200 meters every time. Although I would advise building those platforms only when you get tougher enemies. Otherwise, you will just increase your global stability and um, yeah, it will just cause more enemy attacks and uh, make sure that you have the good inflow of ice or any other infinite resource that you can feed into them. That way you won't have issues of uh, spending your asteroids to supply the defense platforms. One of those platforms costs only 70 stability though, so it's not that heavily influenced by your base, but having like a couple of those will be pricey, so... Yeah, consider that before placing that. And yeah, guys, other than that, I can advise you to uh, slowly move forward with the research, get all the technologies that you need. For example, going straight to the ice catchers will be a good option. I mean, comet catching technology. So that will allow you to be really, really efficient at supplying your base with the defense. Without it, you will spend a lot of the resources for, well, nothing really useful and that will take a lot of research so in order to speed that up get more asteroid research stations get the planet research going and all that by the way guys if you are in the combat i recently just recently learned how this skill works the v skill frenzy it's not just boosting your guys so you shouldn't aim it at your drones you should aim it where you want your drones to be and they will go there and become frenzy over there fighting the enemies also yeah we got pretty cool artifacts from the enemies that you can use uh to boost your base so uh some of those are really cool duplicator will allow you to increase production uh it will be production multiplier for the station radiator will lower three celsius this is insane so it will lower the heat of the station at uh almost no cost so yeah just use them to your advantage don't forget that you can pick them up later and uh place somewhere else oh there we go we got those tridents here as you can see they are taking with the three attacks and that's destroying our guys really fast another tip about combat when you're using your normal attack you can just press and hold you don't need to click multiple times press and hold will work and you can also kite enemies so we can get away from them while shooting at them and that will work well for those shooter guys it won't work for the cutters since they have lasers and that will instantly aim at you kiting is especially useful against those trident ships because as you can see we can kite them and take them out before they do damage to us so yeah guys i think those are all the tips i can give you for now that will give you a really crazy head start and uh, you will be way more efficient at what you're doing in this game don't forget to save from time to time in order to make the checkpoints if you fail you can load from that one and redo something that you already screwed up <laughs> and yeah guys check out the video description for the playlist with the rest of the guides and the episode for the final factory subscribe to the channel like the video and thank you very much for watching see you in the next one stand push out have a good one bye